Hi everyone, welcome to The Grind. If this is your first time joining us, this is a weekly episode where we talk about the sermon that we just heard this past weekend, kind of just digest it and, you know, really see how we can apply it in our lives. And so today we have Rico and Nathan. Hello. And so we have just wrapped up our message series. It's been a nine week series. We've been looking at different mountains in the Bible mm. and Pastor just talked about Mount Hor and you know what it is like to really handle our grief process it well and also how to live our life and yeah finishing it well mm. so it's a um, lot. yeah it's yeah. a lot you know it's been such an incredible series and so um well yeah so a question to start us off is what celebrity death impacted you the most <laughs> um i think for me it would be robin williams Oh, yes. Yeah. That was pretty I mean, sad. Yeah. That one pretty much devastated me for quite a while. Just because, I mean, like, you, you can, every time you see Robin Williams, you always see him as a happy person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. he, you can tell that, for, uh, that he has a good heart based on the roles that he's been, yeah. But yeah. Um, mm -hmm. when I found out about how he died, it's just, you, 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 I didn't, Expected. It's really shocking for yeah. someone like yeah, for him, Robin right? Williams to like, especially for someone who has grown up to kind of like, like a family, yeah. I guess. But then you know, everyone has their hidden demons. You know, if you don't deal yeah. with it, yeah. yeah. So yeah, that uh, for me, it's Robin Williams. Yeah, were you? I think Stan Lee. Um, yeah. I think because I read a lot of the stuff that he created and you know watched cartoons based on the stuff that he created, basically. Mm -hmm all my life and then you know the last 10 years you can't go to a cinema that, without seeing his face yeah, because exactly. he's going to pop up at some point yeah right um yeah. but i think w w it was it, it had a big impact because i kind of just maybe on some level just expected him to live forever i mean <laughs> i mean he was already in his 90s yeah it didn't seem like he was slowing he down die? i think it was 95. oh, oh wow well, like, it looked... didn't seem like he was slowing down he was still traveling in yeah. the last year of his life and Still doing all this Marvel stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he just seemed like a kind of guy who was always going to be around. Yeah. Yeah, true. Actually, um, pop up in every yeah. single Marvel movie, and it's like the most creative way of how he yeah. like shows up. It's mm. kind of amazing. Yeah. So Stanley. Mm. Yeah. Um. I, yeah, I think the one was um, Kobe Bryant for me. Oh. Um, mm. That yeah. was very sad, and I just remember it was during Chinese New Year last year. Mm. And I was sleeping and my phone buzzed. And normally I don't like wake up or anything, like, you know, when my phone buzz, I mean, I'm usually dead asleep, but this time I'm like, oh, what's going on? You know, and then I look at my phone and it was like my BuzzFeed, you know, of all, I was at my BuzzFeed app or is it my BBC News? It was red, I don't remember. Anyways, and then um, it basically says Kobe Bryant and, you know, daughter dies in, in the helicopter crash. Yeah. And I just remember going back to bed thinking, Lord Jesus, let it not be so like praying hard. And then I was like knocked out. And I woke up, it's like, nope, it's true. Yeah. Kobe Bryant died and I don't know I think it affected me because I grew up you know watching him play and you know I was just fascinated by just the way he played and just his commitment to his team and you know I was really into basketball growing mm. up and so and I think he left behind the legacy because he inspired so many generations yeah. of basketball mm -hmm. players people yeah. would say he's like the one that they look up to yeah. and <laughs> he's forever immortalized I guess yeah. in, in our culture mm -hmm. and he's left behind quite a legacy and mm -hmm. so I think yeah, I mean, yeah, sure, we didn't have a direct relationship, but I think he just inspired me in the sense of like the excellence um, yeah. that he put into his craft. And he kind of died pretty young. Yeah. And he died just like a year after he retired. Mm -hmm. oh, so I mean, really it's also his daughter as well. His daughter had like, yeah. it's, you know, her I just, whole life ahead of her. Yeah. Did you guys have to do anything to process that news or? grief mm. to an extent. I guess I'm kind of a person that just sweeps everything under the carpet mm -hmm. and I don't know how to handle grief. Like, um, I mean, if I were to bring it closer to home, right? Like it was also during the time where my uncle passed away quite recently. So I just, I think grief was a very deep emotion because I've never really experienced that kind of grief, the loss of someone, mm. right? So I think I just went about kind of just like not knowing what to do or not knowing where to compartmentalize my emotions mm. so in the end i think we just talked it out yeah because i guess part of the part of the sermon that we heard was that you know you need to in some way process yeah, yeah. to process yeah. that news yeah. yeah and 
um, we saw or heard what happened when mm. a whole population of people don't do that, like mm. with Miriam's death. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. They just everyone they just, just gets really angry and it all kicks yeah. off. Because <laughs> yeah. it's the five stages of grief, right? It was um, yeah. denial. I forgot. I only remember acceptance <laughs> and anger. Denial and acceptance. Those are my two. <laughs> denial, anger, acceptance. I don't remember it's like the denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, my. Thank you, Google. Yeah, thank you, Google. I think I skipped depression. Um, yeah, I think I just went from like denial to acceptance. <laughs> With yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, and then Fasa was talking about Aaron, right? Like we also mm. then transitioned, talked about the death of Miriam, talked about the death of Aaron, and we normally don't really hear much about the death of Aaron, right? I mm -hmm. mean, I didn't even know that he kind of died on, you know, Mount Hor. Mm -hmm. um, but then he talked about how at the end of the day, it wasn't like he was with his son, he was with Moses, right? And yeah. then it wasn't about like his robes and his title. It was really, yeah. he was going to be passing away as a child of God. Like he was mm. 120 years old. Again, climbing up that mountain at 120 years old, you got to be mad fit. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And but then he also did get to see like his robes being put on his, his son. son. His so kind of like yeah. it's his legacy being passed on because, you yeah. know, Aaron was um, the high priest. Yeah. So, yes. He passed away, yeah. and mm. um, and he's done a lot of things in his lives. And unfortunately, one of the things that he's known for is to make that golden calf. calf. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, just imagine like when you, after all these years that you're dead, and one thing about you that we're talking about on the grind, Aaron, <laughs> is your mistake. Your mistake. You done messed up, A.A. Ron. Yes, exactly. It was very unfortunate that 2,000 years later. Oops. Yeah, because even for Moses, right? Yeah. The, every time we talk about Moses, it's about the, the Red Sea. Red Sea, right? So it's not the one where he tapped the water. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, but the, 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 yeah. the Red Sea was the I one mean, that's... Yeah, we don't yeah. really talk about him killing the Egyptian. You know? Yeah, no. Um, we don't... But yeah. him is the calf. Yeah, him yeah. is the calf. Like, yeah. you know, thanks, bro. You uh... Sorry, Aaron. Yeah. Aaron got to go in the way that God wanted him to. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he got to see his legacy get passed down. Like his yeah. his journey ended well. He finished well. Yeah. Despite having made that mistake that we yeah. all still talk about. I think uh, one thing that re the, the the beautiful part of this story is the fact that, you know, while while Aaron's robe was being passed on to his son Eliezer, yeah. you know, is is the, the the part where Aaron met face to face with God naked. Meaning yeah. like it wasn't about his yeah, it was about being titles. high priest, yeah. Yeah, yeah. not being the person who actually yeah. brought the people to yeah. to the promised land, but just being Aaron. The same guy who who um, actually made the calf yeah. got accepted by God. Yeah. yeah. And get to see him face to face. So I think that's the one of the most beautiful part of this story, I think. Yeah, sure. that's. Yeah. I mean, because like what Pastor Wright said, about, like, at the end of the day, it's not about like your acquisitions. Yeah. It's not about mm -hmm. your accolades. Like God wants to meet you just as you are. It's all about mm -hmm. relationship mm -hmm. with Him, yeah. and so that's what life is, right? Yeah. I mean, and so I mean, He did ask a very big question in the sermon, which is, "What is life?" You know, I mean, mm -hmm. if I were to be asked that question, it's like, oh wow, that is a huge question. Yeah, it's a very huge question. Yeah. So, what is life? <laughs> I'm gonna cheat. Uh, I've, are got you in notes. Google? I've got notes. Oh. Um, and say life is a mystery. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like, it, we don't really know how to, like, comprehend it sometimes, mm -hmm. but, but God does. Mm -hmm. He knows the direction He wants you to go in. Yeah. Um, we're just here trying to figure it out, I guess. That's what it feels like, anyway. Yeah. Um, but also, it's it's not, like, it's not just over because it's finished on Earth yeah. Yeah. as well. Yeah. It's eternal. It's a continuation. Yeah, yeah. just but, a different chapter. But how we how we live it and how we finish it here that is sort of up to us. Yeah, yeah. Like I would say, li living uh, life for me would be living it to the fullest for the glory of God, however it may look like. Yeah. Um, like I remember telling God when I was young, I was like, God, I don't know what, but I want to live my life for you while I'm still young. Mm. You know. Maybe that's why my, mm -hmm. my life took the direction that it did. Maybe um, it did. Yeah. Um, I remember making that that vow, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And But then it definitely like, what does it mean to still be young, right? Um, mm -hmm. I think 
<laughs> in my head, I think I'm forever young, you know, like that song. Um, but I think, yeah, while I still can, however I can, like I want to live my life for God, however it might look like. Mm. And it's been, yeah, quite a journey, I would say. Like what you said, life is a mystery. Mm -hmm. Definitely a mystery how everything unfolded. So, mm. you know. I think for me, life is about trying to finish the race well. Mm. Uh, I always imagine like we're in a race, like in a track and field and we're racing, but yeah. you're blindfolded, not knowing where the finish line is. And God is always just whispering the direction where we're going to go. Oh. Something like that. So, oh. whoa. That's so, that's so deep. <laughs> so I that, mean, I'm just thinking like, you know, those athletes on the track with their, with their blindfolded and they're yeah. running. I'm like, I'm going to crash. It's really hard to run in a straight line when you're blind. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. so it, because, you know, like, even for, for me personally, I would yeah. always think like, okay, so what does death actually look like? Uh -huh. But the fact that we don't even realize that what does life ahead of us mm -hmm. actually look like mm -hmm. as well. And I think we need to focus on what is now and what we can do mm. to how to say mold what our future is going to be mm -hmm. as well yeah i mean of course with with god and yeah so so that's that's what i think it is yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's good yeah yeah so as we you know like end this discussion as we wrap up you know have wrapped up the series you know mm -hmm. life right it's all about how we live our life and you know and this message was titled finishing well and I know we're like a little bit young to think about finishing well um, because but then again you never know like what Pastor I said you cannot you don't control the length of your life but yeah. you control the depth so with that being said I think something that we <laughs> can be challenged yeah. to um, yeah. think about is how do we finish our lives well mm. how are we living our lives well mm. um, yeah and I know we talked about that last week right like how we wanted to live our lives and mm -hmm. you know the kind of legacy that we leave behind and yeah you know for everyone on the internet feel free to let us know yeah in the comments like yeah what does it look like to yeah finish well you know yeah i guess with that being said i think we've come to are we, are we finishing well i think we're finishing well i, hope I would so. say i would say <laughs> this is a, a great ending yeah. to this yes. uh, today's discussion Amen. so on that yeah. note peace out homies Bye. Bye.